Hello and welcome to another Festival Pro tutorial video. Today we're going to take a look through fields, um, different field types and um, you know just how they work within your Festival Pro system. So there are two types of fields which I think are important to specify. There are your form fields. These are your form fields. They live predictably on a form. Um, and we've got a whole bunch here that we'll go into in a minute. And then you also have your profile fields. Now a profile field lives against you know a contact. Um, that's all of these fields in here, where you know we might be storing a, a different performance fee for each each artist. Um, and this field here is a profile field. So let's start with form fields. And I'm just going to open up the press application form. Here. And in here we can see we've got these uh, first bunch. Now the organization name um, or the company name, the artist name, we can see here is a, a primary contact field. Primary contact fields are going to create a new contact record. So if, for example, um, we have the artist application form, we'll see this here is also band act name, organization name. We come into here. We can see 201 Dance Company here. This is the organization name, this uh, this this main one here. Same if we go across to, um, say, our vendor, Andromeda Clothing. This is our organization name in here. Then we have our contact name, um, primary contact fields, and that's these contact details that we're going to see, um, you know, stored against, stored against this particular organization. So let's go back to our press application form. And we'll continue down. We've got our organization name, primary contact first name. This is also a primary contact field, as is email. And I believe mobile and phone are also primary contact fields. So all of these are going to automatically sync into creating the contact. After this, we come into a straight text box. Um, now, some of these field options are quite self-explanatory. I'll just run through them quickly now. Um, we've got the counter option. A uh, counter is going to allow you to choose uh, between a minimum and a maximum amount that somebody can select. The text box is obviously just input a, a bit of text. A number, just input, you know, a number is all they can do. A large text box is going to allow them to uh, put in a paragraph of text. Under field options, you can actually uh, change the size of this box as well if you need to. And a single option, if we create a single option, um, this is then going to allow us to uh, have a little drop down. We can see here, create a drop down, but we didn't put any options in it. So perhaps this publication, we want them to choose between being a magazine and, um, I don't know, maybe a fashion blog. So we can update these and go back and now we're going to see that on this form they're going to have the option to choose between uh, magazine and fashion blog. They're only going to be able to choose um, one or the other of these. If we edit this field and we go to the next option which is multiple option and we save we'll find that you're going to be able to uh, now hit down control and you can start selecting uh, multiple options and that is uh, evidently what the multiple option field is for. Um, yes and no is quite um, obvious. Just choose yes or no, it's a little toggle. Uh, URL, put in a, a website URL. A fixed cost, this is an amount that is just going to be set at this rate. It's a fixed cost. Um, it won't be affected by any other things. Um, you want to charge someone a set rate each time. A uh, good example of that is what we, we use this for perhaps the pitch fee that someone might be paying. Um, radio buttons, if we save this um, as a radio button, we'll see our magazine and fashion blog are switched over to this. Check boxes, much the same. You can choose a bit like radio buttons, but as you know, you can uh, choose more than one checkbox. File uploads. Um, now, if they're just files for you guys, um, file upload is fine. If they're files that you're going to be um, putting into an export, giving to someone else, um, you know, using bookmarks or, you know, if this is going to be used maybe for a background on one of your forms, 
then you want to make this a public file upload. Here we have some date fields, um, date of birth, a date, a date and a time, and a start and an end date. Um, to show you what the difference is, and these date and date time is quite obvious. That this one just does the date, but also um, adds the time. And these will create calendars for you as well, date field times. Um, so anything that kind of goes into one of these fields will generate on a calendar for you. I'll preview this. There we go, we've got the date and the time. Um, if I just come back to our field, and I'll just make this start and end date, and we'll refresh this here. And now we can see the publication has got a start and an end. So there are your different uh, date options that you have. A description field just allows you to put a header within your uh, form. And here it gives you a WYSIWYG editor. You can also use the page layout options to hide everything underneath this. So you would have to click on um, your description to see the fields underneath it. Signature strip will allow the form filler to uh, sign their life away. And if you want to remove something from the form, you just click into hidden and that will hide the field away. Uh, you'll see it on the back end struck through if I save this. But now if we preview the form again and refresh, we're going to see that's vanished. Then we have fixed value. This is going to assign a fixed value to the field. Think of it as a text box that cannot be edited or changed. And you can set this value under default value, under field options. If you want to collect more contact information, more than just the primary contact information that we have here that creates the organization. Um, we can click on this one here, choose what we're gonna have. And anyone who fills in this form using these details is going to um, become a subcontact of the organization. A good example of this is perhaps on the Art of Advance, where if we have a look at, um, I don't know, one of, one of these here, we'll see Andrea Walker is, you know, the lead contact for, for this artist. But these names here were put in on one of those contact collect fields. Um, they've actually also been allocated tickets and they're generating QR codes. But um, if we go and view that organization, we're going to see at the bottom, here's our lead contact. And it's now created um, the secondary contacts, which were collected through our contact collect field type. And finally, we have profile link. Um, profile link is quite an advanced field type. It links to one of the grid type fields that we have in our profiles. Um, so if we just hop over to the back end in config, and we'll just take a quick look at the uh, the other half of this profile field link. If we go to um, accreditation, we can see here we have got a type here, quantity, option, grid. These are um, in beta currently, but they do allow us to uh, input quite a lot of good information in a nice grid format. When we want to link these through, we would come in and choose the profile link. And then we can see here, this is that general accreditation one that we have. There's also ones already set up for artist availability and your catering. And yeah, anything that kind of comes in through here is gonna be linked to that profile field over there. And you can read some more detailed information on profile links on our document 360 Wikipedia. There's a whole little article that goes into a little bit more detail about that unique function. Next, we'll have a look at the profile fields themselves. And you get to these within your config login. And as I mentioned before, they differ to the form fields because these are fields that you're gonna um, store directly against your contact. Um, and we give you a whole lot already set up 
your accreditation and you can come in and edit the options perhaps you've got different pass names if you want to start adding new things in uh, you just need to go to the section that you want um, for example maybe we want to add something under travel here we've got the flight from um, flight number flight time maybe we want to add flight to where this is also going so we'll go down to add new option and just look at our options for profile fields and we have very much the same ones in here um, there's text entries numbers single multi-select your date fields date fields with times and start and end dates date of birth counters checkboxes radios all of these uh, we have just uh, looked at in the previous section workflow is a unicorn to profile fields this is going to create a single select that restricts the field that you can change it to for example you can have a workflow perhaps of an agreement saying you introduce warm cold warm you know hot and completed just the status of something so we can uh, have these in here call this workflow we can say um, travel for example um, we could have inquired and booked completed perhaps some options and now we can see that this has allowed you to limit what can be set um, and you cannot go straight from inquired to completed without having gone through booked first after workflow we've got um, URL again a file and public file and description SQL wouldn't really worry about um, color is just um, to uh, allow to put a color against the option Anything that you set as an expense uh, field will be a number field, but the expense will uh, include that in your dashboard stats for your incomings and outgoings, um, often used for things like performance fee. And then we've also got an income, which is obviously the opposite, a numerical field, which uh, gets put into your stats. You can use this, for example, like vendor fees. So the vendors are, are paying you, whereas you're paying the artists. Underneath we can put in groups and here's our profile link fields, date quantity, quantity option. And you can play around with these. These are, are new options that we have just to allow you to kind of input data in a slightly neater fashion than having a whole bunch of drop down boxes. Fields can also have conditional options when used on forms. For example, if we were to go to the um, press application form. We can see in here we can uh, start to set some conditions up so perhaps um, we only want to allow them to answer the question uh, what free event coverage do you have planned if they have said they have previously attended the festival so we can come into here and there's another video that goes into a bit more detail on this um, and we'll go through it a little bit slower but i can say i, I you know have you attended the festival before if um, yes is not selected uh, sorry if no is not selected then um, show so if you have attended this festival is yes then show the field you can save this preview there we go there you can see that's adding adding that question in you'll sometimes find it useful um, to take information that's coming through a form and you want to replicate that information in one of the profile fields stored against someone's profile. So if we were to take, for example, the um, vendor contract, now you're likely to want to store against your vendor their electrical requirements. Now this is something that if you know them, you could kind of find your vendor, I believe Andromeda, clothing are in here and we can come into here and we can just set their electric um, up as is but there's high likelihood that really what you want in this field here is whatever they paid for on their form um, on their vendor contract so we can kind of come back into our vendor contract and we can go down to this electrical hookup field and we want whatever they put in here to store into that that profile field and we do that by syncing and under the options list we're going to be able to see you know what syncs are set up so far and if we edit the field 
come down to field options we can see here is the option where um, it allows you to sync this data and then here we can come in and say well we want this to go into electrical hookup whatever data they put into this field will be synced directly into their profile field if this is a new field that you want to put in you could go into config and profile fields and you could create the field here first um, or alternatively we do allow you to do this within the field options itself now I come down to field options and go sync data to and at the top I can go add new field and here I can say well I would like to put in vendor and I'd like to choose uh, it's going to be a, a counter of how many additional vehicles they're going to have I can save that and now if we go down to our vendor fields we're going to see that that is now an option in here so that's an overview of our fields the different types of profile fields and form fields that we have how you can sync those together and how you can create your own just to build out um, whatever you really need from the platform so i hope this video has been helpful